for the presence of our Father in Christ. Celebrate the Lord for the choir for the rendition of the songs today. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? In Psalm 16, 11, he say, you will show me the path of life. Praise God. He says, in your presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand. Come finish it for me. Church. Pleasures forevermore. Hallelujah. There is pleasure in the house of God. There is joy in the house of God. So when you come to the house of God, come with an expectation that you will not leave the same way that you came. Expect to receive something. When you come here, not expecting something, you won't receive anything. The Spirit of God is in the house. The altar of God is here. So this is where the Spirit lies. This is where the Spirit dwells. Praise God. So today, I want you to say to yourself, today is my day. The devil is put to shame. No matter what your problem is, God is in control. There's nothing he cannot do. So rest assured that as you come here today and you lift your hands to the heaven and you pray and glorify God, he's there to beckon call. Hallelujah. So be prepared. Be prepared for the, for the word that will come to you today. Hallelujah. Without further ado, I'll introduce our Father in Christ who will minister to us today. A great man of God, a great teacher, a humble, diligent, honest, peaceful man, a man who speaks the truth. He tells you what you need to know, not what you want to know. Some of us, it might not seem well for you, but in the long run, it's the medicine for that sickness. Hallelujah. So today, I want everyone to be on their feet who are able to. And put your hands together as I welcome to the podium none other than our own senior pastor, Pastor George Ball. Let's lift our hands before the presence of the Lord as we give and submit our heart, our mind, our soul in the hands of our Heavenly Father, that God will cleanse us, open our heart to understand any revelation He gave us this afternoon. That God will cause us to be obedient to his word he has prepared for us this afternoon. Heavenly Father, this is the day you have made. We have gathered in the mighty power of your name. We have come together because you have called us, you have chosen us. We have come together to worship you and to lift up your name. We have come together to hear the word you have prepared for us today. Open our heart to understand and to receive all instructions and all revelations in the power of your name. Forgive us our sins as we sit at your feet and forgive our family as we pray for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. May have a seat. Praise the Lord. It's always good to be in the house of God. So this is the day that the Lord has made. It's such a precious day. A day of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sundays are the day of the Lord. It's a day we come to the house of God to worship the Lord. To give his due. To glorify him. 
to lift his name. That day cannot be erased. It is a divine right. It's a day of worship. Any other day that we choose is for the day of man. For God gave man six days to work. Just six days to work. And out of the remaining one day, God says it's reserved for him. And in Christian world, because of Christ's resurrection, that day of God is a day we gather together on Sundays to worship God. Everything is for the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we glorify God this afternoon and we lift up his name for his goodness and his mercy, his grace upon our life. Amen. Amen. This afternoon we're going to talk about something important. The curtain, the curtain is drawing at this final stage of time. In other words, the drawing curtains in this final stage of time, of time, time. God has programmed time because time is a judgment of God upon the earth. Time is divided into periods. Time has an end and time has a beginning. When time has a power and influence over the things of the earth and the heavens, God is in total control of time. He apportioned time to everything that is on the earth and in the heavens according to his will. Now, we are going to look in specific frame of time out of all the times that is out there. We're going to look at specific frame of time where God wants to draw our attention to. But first, I wanted to take our Bible to the book of Isaiah. We are going to read Isaiah 65, verse number 17. Isaiah 65, verse number 17. Let's hear the I, word of the Lord. Isaiah 65, 17. For behold, uh -huh. I create a new heavens and a new earth, uh -huh. and the former shall not be remembered or come to mind. Hallelujah. Now, look at this very carefully. The word of God says, for behold, the Lord says, behold, I, the Lord, I create new heavens, New heavens, the stars, the moon, the solar system, everything, the new heavens, that is everything out there. There are heavens. One of the things that the Bible is so true, before we discover all these things, the Bible has actually prophesied that these are there. And man began to discover the heavens, that there are so many planets out there. But the earth, out of the heavens, the holy indwelling place where life exists is the earth. So the Bible is so accurate. Before the discovery of all these things, here goes the prophecy of the Bible. It says, heavens and earth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So the Bible says, for behold, I great new heavens. In other words, there was a time that God created the heavens. There was a beginning for the heavens. There was a beginning for the earth. 
And the Bible says, the former shall not be remembered or come to mind. Amen. Time has a beginning. Time has an end. God is in control of total time. Praise the Lord. Because he created a beginning of time. And he is the one that will end time. Praise the Lord. So, he said, behold, I greet a new heavens, meaning that a new things are going to happen. And a new earth. What does it mean? It means that in the Bible, the Bible begins with a paradise lost. And it ends with a paradise gain. I repeat, just in case you don't get it. You look at this. Behold, I greet new heavens and a new earth. And the former shall not be remembered. Or come to mind. See, at a time that there's going to be a new creation, new heavens, new earth. When you are sister, you're going to forget. It never will occur in your mind if you made it. If you made it. If you made it to live in paradise. Or in the kingdom of God. You're not going to remember those who hurt you. The pain. That. Everything is not going to come to mind. Anything that is associated with suffering, poverty, sickness, all the frustration, disappointment, not even one dot will come to mind. Wow. To you, nothing ever existed before. Nothing ever happened before. That's what it's going to be. So that, that process is called a new beginning. It's like your mind, the memory software in your mind has been deleted. Everything has been deleted. Your heart, your pain, those, everything, those who hurt, everything is gone completely. So, there's a new mind, new start, new thing. Praise the Lord. That is the promise of God that is going to happen. It's going to happen. You don't even remember. Nothing, 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 nothing. That is of the formal things, which is what we are now in our today's world that we are living today. So everything is going to pass away. That's what God is saying. Things you are doing, whatever you are doing, whatever you're building, things you're doing, things you're struggling, is going to come to a time that if you made it in the kingdom of God, you will not remember your effort and your labor, your tears, and all the pain, the troubles you went through in life, the hardship you faced, the difficulties, the mountains, the valleys, anything, the hell, the flood, and all the storms of life, you will not remember them anymore. God promise done. It's going to happen, not just the earth new, but the mind renewed. Praise the Lord. So, such is the power of God. That Genesis is a story God is telling. Revelation is the story God is telling. One is the story of how a paradise is lost. Man lost the paradise. And it ends in the book of Revelation how paradise is going to be regained back. So, God in a sense... It's telling a story from the beginning of time to the end of time. Wow. That is what you have in your hand today. So, having said that, we are going to go to one of the prophecies that God gave to his servant in a time of old. So, let's look at the book of Daniel, chapter 12. Daniel chapter 12, verse 4 and 9. Daniel chapter 12, 
verse 4 and 9. Are you there? If you're there, say amen. Yes. Okay, let's Daniel hear the word four. of God. Uh -huh. But you, Daniel. But you, my servant Daniel. Shut up the words. Shut up the words. And seal the book until the time of the end. And seal the book until what? The time of the until end. Until what? The time of the end. Until what? The time of the end. Until the time of the end. Seal the book. Seal it. Don't disclose it. Don't give understanding. Don't give the meaning. Don't give. Don't even write it. Seal the book. What I am giving to you is for time of the end, not your time. So if you seek understanding, it won't give you any good. What I'm giving you today is to prove that I am a God of accuracy. Wow. Because if I give it to them at a later time, that will not, there will not be any connection or reference to refer to God. I've said this, God, I've said that. I am giving you a prophecy, and that prophecy I'm giving to you today, lock it up until the time of the end. Now, what is the time of the end means? This is where I wanted to show you. First of all, because God is in control of time, he has an impact on everything within time, including the people and the seasons and everything in it. As a result, powerful nations that rise up, God has a hand for his purpose. The end of times, this actually referring to the times of the end. It's not the end, by the way. It's referring to a particular time where God has given history to the Gentiles. The Gentiles are going to rise. They're going to have a certain power and influence all over the world. But their time is going to end. And the beginning of the time started from the king of Babylon. The king of Babylon. If you saw the image of the king, the dream of the king which he had, he could not understand the big image that had gold, silver, brass, iron, then the food, clay, and iron together. From the hand of the toe, he couldn't understand until Daniel showed up and revealed the meaning of this that has to do with empires. For powerful emperors that is going to control the world in their specific time frame. And it start with the king of Babylon. Now, that is the Gentile nations are going to have a beginning and they're going to have a time. And after that, there's going to be a gap. And that gap, right? That gap, nobody knows how long this gap is going to be. Now, when the gap, according to the Lord, is up, then begin the second history of the Jews, which is going to be in the tribulation period. <laughs> I don't know. May God help me to give you a clear understanding of what I'm preaching because these things are very complicated. Once again, once again, God, our Heavenly Father, who created everything on earth, foresaw the fall of man. He began the story in the book of Genesis where everything summarized about paradise lost. And God sealed up everything in the book of Revelation disclosing paradise gain back. That is God's story. But within God's story, he gave the wise wisdom to such certain mysteries. 
There are people who don't have time for the Bible. They are so busy for their own things, so therefore they're not going to search for these deep things. They don't have time for it. Bible say when Daniel was captured and taken to Babylon, Bible say ah, after staying there for many years, he started taking the Bible, the Torah, he reading it and studying it and realized that out of what he's studying, there is a time for them to leave Babylon. So he started to pray to the Lord, at what exact time are we going to leave because you prophesied judgment for 70 years for us. But the 70 years is almost over. Daniel have to study the word of God. He went deep into it and then realized that, hey, come on, it's time now. But meanwhile, God have not come and whispered to any prophecy, time is about to happen. You guys should get ready. No. Because everybody is busy in their own situations and distractions because they are in captivity. They are busy in their troubles. Some of them are busy in their education. Some of them are busy in their job and their business. Some of them are busy in getting married. Some of them are busy having children. They do not have the time to look into the Bible, dig in and see the promises of God that is hidden. The jewel and that is hidden. And so Daniel rose up and he began to study the word of God and found that there is a jewel of time for them to be free from 70 years of captivity in Babylon. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So, the time and the end of the time, the time of the end, refer to the beginning of the Gentiles power all the way to the time is going to end. Then when it end or about to end there's a transition quick transition to the Jewish history again. God is going to greet the Jewish history but that history is going to be taught in a very brief time of seven years in the time of tribulation. When judgment upon the Jews is going to happen, at which time the church will be taken already during rapture. The church is not going to be there. During, that's why the gap is there. God is going to take the, the church during the gap period, which is where we are now. At any time, Jesus will come for his church. At any time. Any time. So, Bible says, but you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the end of the time. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase, which is what we have today. Who could have thought that you pick up a phone, take your hand, stroll on the screen, and things are be moving on the screen? Who could have thought that 20, 30 years ago? But today, you use your hand, you go do whatever you want to do, and you are in on top of the world. More and more are coming. As you see, because of man's knowledge, there is weapons are so sophisticated at being created, ready for our own distractions. You see, knowledge has increased and continued to increase to the point that today's children, today's children, they know more than their fathers and mothers. I'm telling you, you all know that, you all witnesses. To these children, no more. In the olden days, when you experience life, you acquire knowledge and you teach your children who does not experience life. But today, everything is cooked shortcut. They go to the internet, they got all the information they need to know.
And as they are growing with this type of experience, they now, because they have an idea, by the time they get older, they better that idea. In other words, the new innovation and new ideas, that is better than the former ones. These are the generation we are living today where our children know more than us. Daddy, don't do it this way. Mom, oh, that's not how we do it. That's the talk of town today. So you can see the knowledge has indeed increased. Now, man is going to other planets. More and more planets are being discovered more. I remember when we were in school, we were taught and taught that there were only nine solar planets, isn't it? Nine. Today, how many? More and more discoveries. There are more being discovered. So you can see that knowledge has indeed increased in our time. Now, let's go to verse number nine. Verse nine. And he said, go your way, Daniel. And the Lord said to Daniel, go your way, Daniel. Go your way, Daniel. For the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. For the words of this revelation concerning what is about to happen is sealed up until when? Till the Till what? Time of, time of the end of the Gentile rule. Time of the end of Gentile rule. So today we all know that Gentiles are in Superman. Look at China, look at the US, look at see they are not the Jewish nation. Today the Jewish nation are asking for help from the US from weapons. They are powerful, but they still rely on the US. So they are not really ruling the world. It is the U.S. that are policing the world and Western nations. So it's considered Gentile nations. They are ruling just us in the beginning. Where we have the king of Babylon, he is absolute monarchy and powerful. He declared that on you, nobody can just say no. As time goes on, over and over, you see, from this to all the way, till we get to um, um, uh, monarchy mixed with democracy. Now, we are here in the gap of time. Now, let me prove something to you. Bible says, seal this till the time of the end, right? Okay, so let's go to the book of Revelation. Revelation 22, verse 10 to 13. Revelation 22, verse 10. Let's say amen. Verse 10. Verse number 10. Hear the and, word of God. And he said to me. And he said to me. Do not seal the words of the prophecy. Do not seal the words of the prophecy of, the prophecy of this book. Of this book. Book. For the time is at hand. For the time is what? At hand. Amen. Now is the time. In the beginning, at the time of Daniel, it wasn't the time of the end. At the time of the apostle John, when it's being revealed to him in the book of Revelation, some of the things that God has shown to Daniel, the Lord said, now you can what? You can just open it up. Because the time is now. It's at hand. Wow. So you can see that from the time of Daniel when he lived in the first superpower of all, the king of Babylon, all the way to the time of John where the Romans, you see, the Romans, that would be where the feet is. The feet and the clay. You see, where now, now, now that day, the iron, now that day, because of the power that they wait at the time of Jesus, we all know they control the empire, a lot of places, 
The Romans were in superpower at that time. Praise the Lord. Now, when we talk about these four empires, we are talking about, you see, we are not talking about a superpower like, for example, a superpower nation, let's say, like China. But China is not going to one country and say, I'm kicking everybody out. We're taking over the country. Many, many like that. In the olden days, all these things I'm talking about is what is happening. But now, it's not like that. They are for power. But they are being checked by other powers, so they don't invade. But with opportunity, if they do, it's just one or two nations. But in the olden time, it was all over the place. That's the difference. So God is talking about the power that is taking all countries. And there were four nations, four empires, sorry, four empires, starting from Babylon. You see. So that is very important to understand. So now, Bible says that in the book of Revelation, it's that and he said to me, do not see the words of the prophecy of this book. Why? Because for the time is at hand. The time is close. The curtain is about. You see, the curtain is now, see, when we draw the curtain, and I go to the point where it's almost over. The time is at hand. Now you can reveal. Now you can tell them. So now that we are knowing whatever is in the book of Revelation, it means that the time is on hand now. The time of the end has come for God to reveal what is being revealed today. God promised that he's going to reveal until the time of the end. And here we go. Fast forward to the book of Revelation. He's revealing something to John. So it tells you that we are at the, well, the time of the end. So it means that right now, whatever you're seeing around is preparation for the end of Gentile power. You see, in Jerusalem today, They are planning to rebuild the temple of Solomon. Where the temple of Solomon used to be, there is what we call the Dome of the Rock. The Dome of the Rock is a Muslim mosque. That is there. They have come and built a mosque there. And it's one of the third sacred mosques for the Muslim. So in order to build the temple, this mosque must go away. The Bible has prophesied that there's going to be a temple in the tribulation period. So if there's going to be a temple in the tribulation period, right now there's no temple. What they have there is not a temple. It's not what they, they are planning. They are putting committees. They are gathering things to actually build a magnificent temple. The temple was destroyed. By the Romans, previous temples at the time, I mean, 70 years after Jesus. When Jesus was there, the temple that was built was built by King Herod, Herod the Great. He built a magnificent temple, very huge, very big one. When he built that temple, that was the temple Jesus went in and ministered. That was the temple at the time of Jesus. But 70 years later, that temple was destroyed by the Romans themselves. They destroyed the temple. So now, the temple is going to be built at the end times in Jerusalem. But in order to build that temple, that dome of rock must go away. And right now, as I'm speaking to you, there are Muslim powerful nations 
that have nuclear weapons. So if Israel attempt to by force take away the dome of the rock, there's going to be war all over the world. And nuclear wars, I'm talking about, even if you say, whatever you're hiding, it's going to affect me, it's not going to affect me. The radiation enough, the power of the radiation, if you ask any engineer or scientist, they will tell you, the radiation enough, it will just knock you dead. Slow death, painful one. So you can see where we are now. Look at Iran. But the Bible says, yes, what is going to happen is when the Antichrist comes, because he's powerful at that time, he's powerful in the middle of the week. First, in the beginning of the week, he's going to have a contract with the Jews, allow them to build the temple. In the middle of the week, he's going to, he's going to uplift the, term, uh, the contract. He's going to say, no, no more. I want to be God in that temple. You see? It means that at the time of the Antichrist, after the church is taken away, in the beginning of the tribulation, the Antichrist will allow the Jews to build their temple in Jerusalem, meaning that the Muslims will be defeated. They will be defeated. Once they are defeated and everything is settled, the Antichrist now is going to show up and say, no, he's going to withdraw from the covenant he's, he, he signed with the Israelites or the Jews. He's going to break that. When he breaks that, he's going to take that magnificent temple and use it as his religious center where he's going to go in and set himself as God. That's the beginning. Oh, my God. Of terrible things to happen on earth. So you can see right now that the nations that are rising up think about North Korea, think about Russia, think about Iran, think about all these nations that are rising, they are preparing for a showdown. Because God said, it's a prophecy that a temple is going to be built in the tribulation period with this Muslim world that have nuclear power and powerful making alliance with China and North Korea. How do you think Israel is going to be able to overcome them? It's going to take some sort of power. So God is watching and the Antichrist, remember, is powerful. He's going to control the world. Remember, it's going to be a third time that Satan has come and incarnated himself in man. The first time he came, he incarnated himself in a serpent and deceived the whole world. He called the downfall of the world. And God, once he left, God punished the serpent. Jesus came to restore everything back. When he, Jesus, the moment Jesus came, the serpent also incarnated himself again because what Jesus came to do was very important to restore everything back. So he also came at that important time and incarnated himself in Judas. So when he was killed, guess what? God destroyed the body in which Judas allowed the Satan to use himself for. He destroyed again. Bible say, and Judas went to his own place. That is the bottomless pit. We learned that. Now, the third time is going to come. He's going to incarnate himself into the Antichrist. This is the final of the final. That's why that Antichrist will be destroyed too. God will destroy him. But not until he caused a lot of problems for those who did not make it in the rapture? The Antichrist is going to use the technologies as we have today to help him, assist him to rule all the kingdoms of the world. 
here come the AIs. Now everything is being computerized. Things are being done in a computerized way in a system so that they can control the world. It's, it's happening. Now all nations, the poor nations, everybody is moving to that level. They are preparing for the grand showdown of control. If you live in Brazil and you commit a crime and you come to the U.S. and they want to see if you commit a crime, they just call the, maybe the, um, the government of Brazil to help them to see if you are a dangerous person, someone who sells drugs, someone who export drugs, whatever, they can easily come on with that without talking to you. You shall be in front of them. As you stand in front of them interview, you can lie all you want, but it's in front of them. They know who you are. The time will come where buying and selling is going to be like that. Today, you see how you have your credit card, you go everything. It's not the money itself, but the card is computerized, everything centralized. So things like that. So when he controls, see, every credit card, you have this emblem on it. If it's changed, you have this chip that allows you to draw the money. That fills it. So imagine that if that chip is the signature of the Antichrist, you cannot use it. Until you have the seal of the chip of the Antichrist. So, how are you going to buy and sell? In order to buy and sell, you have to use your card. And you use your card, you have to have the chip. And if you have the chip, you belong to the Antichrist. So, how are you going to survive? The only way to survive is believe in Jesus Christ now so you can be saved. That when Jesus comes, you'll be ruptured away. You'll be gone. Amen. And those that are left are going to face all these realities. So children of God, hear the word of God. God is speaking to you. You who have time, you have plenty of time, always indulging in things that is not of God. Ungodly things. Spending a lot of time in things that are not important. You don't have time time for the things of God. But you have plenty of time for ungodly things. You spend too much time on ungodly things in your, in your phone. You go to social media. You do so. You spend hours. But you sit in the church for a couple of hours. You, your buttocks is tired. Meanwhile, you can sit in the chair and read hours and hours and hours. Your buttocks will not get tired. You see how unfair you are. You think that God doesn't notice this. He's a supreme God. He knows the heart of men. Let us all turn back to our God. Let us have time for our Lord. You need to come to Bible study to know. If you don't know anything, come to Bible study. Ask questions. You need to grow in the knowledge of God. Spend time. It's the day of the Lord. Have time. Sacrifice time. Be there for godly activities. Be there. Be there. So, as you can see, the word of God. Said, Do not see the words of this prophecy, of this book, for the time is on hand. Continue, verse 11. He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. You see. He who is holy, let him be holy still. Jesus testifies to the churches. Amen. Amen. Now, verse 12 says, well, and verse 12 again, read verse 12. And behold, and I am behold. coming quickly, and my reward is with me. Give to everyone according to his work. Verse 13. 13. I am the Alpha and the Omega. Uh -huh. The beginning and the end. Uh -huh. The first and the last. Uh -huh. Verse 14. Blessed are those who do his commandments. Uh -huh. That they may have the right to the tree of life. Uh -huh. And may enter in through the gates into the city. Hallelujah. So here we go. What Jesus is saying. He said now. He said. Apostle, do not seal the words of this prophecy normally because the time is right now, it's at hand. It's time for, we are at the end, we are the time of the end. Now it's close, we are there. 
We are at a gap. Something's about to begin. So reveal it. And let warn the people that are living in this time. Now, this is the warning. He said, he who is unjust. He who is unjust. What is unjust? He said, when we talk about unjust in the Bible, it is anything that is not based on what is morally right. Or any behavior that is not based on what is morally right. According to the things of God. In other words, you are not based on things that are morally right or fair. For example, if you are racist or tribalism, you practice tribalism because somebody doesn't come from or doesn't share the same race, you discriminate against them, not knowing that these are different people that God created for his own pleasure. It is for his own pleasure and for our own wonder. Just to look at each other and say, wow, the oneness of God is amazing. But instead, you have weaponized them to fight among yourself. Oh, you're not from my tribe. You're not from my country. So therefore, when you are in Christ, everybody become one. You must treat each other equal and fair. When you treat others based on their race or their culture or where they come from or their country, then guess what? You are against Christianity. You are against Christianity. You don't practice the doctrine of Christ. And Bible says such people will continue to be unjust until the end. It's the end. In other words, they're going to be locked up. You can never repent. You can't come back. When the time comes, you are going to remain the same. You will never change. It's like somebody who is addicted to something. You can't come back. It's over. You are going to remain like that. So if you are unjust, always playing the race card or playing the tribalism card or playing the, the nationality card, you are going to be like that till the end, till you die. You may go to church. You may pray. It will not going to change because this is a prophecy. It's a prophecy. And God's prophecy does not fail. It does not fail. So when the time comes, that is who you are. You're going to remain like that. You're going to be addicted to being unjust. Wow. Think about this. God is warning each and every Christian all over the world, around the globe, that you should desist from these things that the world is doing. That's what the world is doing. You are not of the world. So why are you practicing the same thing? Why are you indulging the same thing? When somebody comes from different nation, when he come and be with you, it's your brother, it's your sister, you have to do the same help as you do to somebody that comes from your own nation or your own family. You must treat them equally. Because if you don't practice this, then that's outside the doctrine of Christ. Outside the word of God, you are going to be unjust till you die. You are going to be addicted to like that, just like that. Today, repent today. If you are such a person, this time now is the time to change. Because we are there, we are almost there. We don't know when the locking is going to happen. It's going to happen at any moment. Any moment, because we are already there. Children of God, treat each other well. Treat each other like your brother or your sister. You're going to love one another. When you are Christian, you are no more gentile. When you are Christian, you are no more gentile. You are a Christian. You are God's children. Like I said, God sees the world in three groups. The Gentiles, the Jews, and the believers, which is the Christians. These are the only way God sees the world. He doesn't see white, black, brown, Chinese, whatever. No. Because the Chinese can be a Christian, the black can be a Christian, the white can be a Christian, the brown can be a Christian, the yellow can be a Christian. 
Once such group of people become a Christian, which is like a melting pot, such a person is one and equal before the eye of God. There's nothing about tribalism. There's nothing about racism. There's nothing about anything. So, desist from other people who are trying to pollute your mind. Run away from them. They're trying to pollute your mind. Reject those people and their false doctrines. Once you become Christian, you are matter, you are one. You are my brother, my sister. Jesus said, these are my brother, my sister. These are my mother, my parents. See, they are my people. You see, Jesus said that. So, children of God, be careful. Because the time is coming and the time has come as at hand. Those who are unjust, Bible says, let him. You see, meaning there's a power that's going to lock you up. Let him be unjust. You cannot escape it. You cannot repent. It's over for you. It makes sense for people who are stubborn and stiff-necked. Because such people don't change. They don't want to change. Everything about them is pride. You should be proud of your Christianity and your God. You should be proud of each other, your brothers and sisters. Isn't it wonderful that we're all from different backgrounds coming together? Be more than in the house of God. We look at each other. He said, oh my God. I would like to visit your country. I would like to visit where you come from. Oh my God, it's wonderful. Our God is great. Now I have a brother. If I'm not from Cameroon, or I'm not from Caribbean, if I'm not from other nations, I am proud to say I'm from your country because I can visit your country anytime you want. You can introduce me to your relatives and say, hey, my pastor is coming. My brother is coming. Accommodate him. I can be all around the country based on the people that I have, based on the people that I know. They are my brothers and my sisters. Children of God, treat each other well. Treat each other with love. Because if you don't do it and you continue to indulge in your own mindsets and your own understanding, a time will come in which you are knowing will not know when, when the time comes, God will lock you up and you will continue to be unjust to others. It is over for you until you end up in your grave. It goes on, it says, let him be unjust here. You see, unjust here. You'll be unjust here till you die. This is a prophecy of the book that's been sealed. It's been opened. It's been revealed. This is a secret that was before sealed. Now things are being sealed. This is being known to you now. It said it's going to be a time. This is going to happen. And we are living in that time because the book has been unsealed now. So we are in the time of the end. Children of God, let's stop playing politics in church. Let's love one another. What is so hard for you to do this? What is this so hard for you to do this? The Bible says, he who is filthy, let him be what? Filthy one. Steal. Wow. When we talk about filthiness, we talk about uncleanness. You can wear the cloth of filthy. You can speak filthy languages. Those of you who love to curse with your mouth. Your mouth, filthy things coming from your mouth. 
Everything is in the Bible. Filthy language. The Bible calls it filthy language. Filthy things. So if you are like that, that's why you see people, you keep cursing, you can't stop. Keep going. When the time comes, call locking you, you'll be easy one. The first one to go, they put the flag in front of you. You are the first one to go. They push you in your arm, number one. Because you didn't stop when you were out there, when you have the opportunity to stop. You can be filthy and clean. When the Bible talk about filthy, the Bible talk about unclean languages and sexual filthiness. Those of you watch pornography, you are doing stuff that are filthy. These are not of God. You're going to stop that. You're going to clean up. Change. You're happy to change. Because if you don't, just like some people are addicted to pornography, they're addicted to sexual immorality. It's not just pornography, by the way. It's not just that. But there are some people, they don't do pornography, they don't watch this thing, but they're addicted to sexual immorality. Jumping from one partner to another, having fun. Just like that. These are all sexual immorality. The Bible calls it filthiness. They're filth. Uncleanness. Wow. The Bible is revealing a revelation to you. He said there are some people you know this well. If you do statistics of people who practice sexual immorality, about the percentage of the people in the world, you'll be amazed. Oh, yeah. Even in U.S. here. Thank you. Somebody say U.S. here. You'll be amazed. Oh, in the church. Oh, really? Huh. Well, it's only between your God. But I can only minister to you. My mission is to save you with love. Amen. My mission is to bring you to God's side with all love. But I have to tell you the truth. The truth is painful. The truth is full of fire. But that is the only way you can be saved. Amen. Don't run away from the truth. Don't shut your ears and your heart from the truth. Change your wicked ways. Repent and come to God. Change it. God will give you the opportunity to start a new clean place. If you are willing to change. It must change. Because a time is coming. A time is coming. And Bible says that time is at hand. When that time comes, or at hand, because which means you don't know, we are in the gap period. A gap period. When God move on to the next locking up stage, you who are filthy, you are going to remain filthy. Your language will be filthy. Your cloth, in the sense, what you wear, meaning what you are doing behind the eyes of everyone. What you are doing in your secret life. You remain doing those things in your secret life until you die. It's about time to repent. Change your ways. Because these are truth. If you do not change, I guess, I'm sorry to say, you are lost. Bible says, he who is righteous, let him be righteous still. It's a command, the power behind. There are some people who try their best to do the best. So God overwhelmed them. They'll continue to be like that. They can't come back. They are stuck. They will be righteous. Wow. In other words, they will never get tired of doing something good. You see, people, they get tired of doing something good. Oh, pastor, I'm tired of having this man. I'm tired of having this woman. I'm tired of, you know, going to church for three hours. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. You are tired. Sure. Everything is temporary. The thing that you are not tired of, you think it's going to remain forever. 
The thing you think you're not tired of, the thing you love to do, that you are not tired of it. They all have an end. Turn of God. God is assuring those who are walking in righteousness. See, keep walking because the time is going to come that you'll be, you have so much power that you are not going to be dragged into doing evil things because it's easy to overcome temptation from now onwards. Because God is going to help you just as those who are indulging in filthy things. Now they become powerless to repent. If you continue to do the right things, God will give you power. So now it's like the Holy Spirit is powerfully helping you. Things become so easy to reject temptation. It's going to be so easy. So easy. Too easy. Because you have the power of God that's locked you in. It meaning you are sealed. You are sealed. You will be sealed. So don't get tired of doing good. And he goes on to say, he who is holy, let him be holy still. Praise the Lord. So the people who are living, they are trying their best because they fear God. They're saying, Lord, I'm old enough to get married. But at this point, nobody is coming from my hand. I'm getting old. I have no family. I'm going to be by myself. But this man that want to marry me, say he want to sleep with me first. But I said, because of my Christian principle, I said no. But Lord, I'm scared. But because of you, I'm going to say, if it comes to the fact that I have to make a choice where I will be childless, unmarried, till I die because of you, so be it. This is holiness. Because this type of sacrifice is not for everyone. It's not everyone that can take this. It's not easy for this type of sacrifice. It's tough sacrifice. It's hard. Because being alone in this world is not the way God created us. God created us to be associated with each other. That's why for a person like that, the church must surround themselves. We must help them. We must encourage them. We must be their security. But today, Churches today. What is happening? We are allowing the devil to come in the church and divide the church. Because when the devil divides the church, the church becomes powerless. Bible says, iron sharpens iron. You must be each other's brother's keeper. But today, what is going on today in this church? Church all over the world. Because we, who claim to be children of God, we have turned our back on God. Now, this is what Jesus said in verse 12. He said, and behold, I am coming quickly. When is he coming quickly? At the time of the end. Remember, this is about the time of the end. So, at the time of the end, if it comes, Jesus is giving this message. I am coming quickly. Meaning, any moment from now, Jesus can show up. Any moment. Any moment. Because this message is for the time of the end, which we live in the gap. Any time from now, how the world is going, the end of Gentile superpower and rule is coming to an end. The book is about to close. You see, never in a million times that the citizens of Egypt knew that their empire would collapse. Oh, yes. They never thought so. They were so powerful. It take the Babylon, king of Babylon. Ha! The guy swept Egypt like this. Easy. He's overwhelmed the Egyptians. Just like that. Overwhelm them, sweep them, become the first world superpower empire. Man, the beginning of the Gentile time. It came. And when this man, he thought he was so powerful, he decided to make himself like a god. 
He made a statue. He asked people to bow down. If you don't bow down to it, guess what? Just as it happened in the beginning, it's going to happen at the end where the Antichrist is going to create the same statue just as it happened in the beginning, so it shall happen in the end. Yes. The only difference is that the king repented at the end. He repented. He got saved. The reason why he repented because God brought him, he greeted him for a purpose. God brought him to this world for a purpose. To start history. A power for Gentile nation to start something going. So he brought this guy. Now this guy becomes so swollen headed because the power around him is so powerful, he starts doing his own thing. Then God has to punish him at one point. He went greasy. He went mad. And he was eating things on the floor. A king of such multitude and power. Yes. He went crazy. But God restored him. But then, he lost his kingdom. He lost his kingdom to the Assyrians. They also came and swept everything that this kingdom has conquered only they swept everything including them the Syrians came the patience they came and took everything so then no one also thought that these Assyrians they thought they are so powerful they are able to bring down the king of Babylon so they are of course they are boasting they are powerful until the Greek shows up Overwhelm them. This small nation came. Overwhelm them. They also their time came. The Roman shows up. You see, the Roman shows up. Overwhelm them. Now, where are the Romans today? So you can see that the others Western. But power nation has rose, but this time they are not doing what these guys did before. They are influencing nation, yes, but they are not conquering, they are not there to take over like what these nations did. So that type of that type of mentality, that type of history is over now. It's their time of end is happening. So now these superpower nations that are there, their time is about to end. Children of God. We, the children of God, the reason why God hasn't done anything yet, because believers are still in this world. As long as you and I are here, we are the salt of this world. We are the light of this world. God has withheld his hand. Until he comes, take off the people. Then there's the beginning of everything. And the new beginning of Jewish history, which is the last history of the Jews, which is the judgment of the Jews. They're going to go through the biggest, toughest tribulation of time that they never experienced. It's going to be so bad that those of you who are going to be taken from the rapture, you will not have understanding to know what is happening on earth because you are there with the Lord. But those of you who stayed uh, did not repent, then you are going to see the wickedness is going to abound. You see, it's going to start where these angels are going to blow trumpets, judgment after judgment. The, you know, the golden balls and everything that these trumpet blows, seven trumpets, everything is going to happen. Each period is going to be so terrible. At one point, hunger. Oh my God, a lot of things are going to happen. Those of you who like to drink and eat, when the time comes, the drinking and eating shall be a poverty. Yes. To buy a water, a bottle of water, you have to use your card. The card has to have a chip. If you want to go to hell and you're hungry, you have to think twice. 
You go buy the water with a chip. That's it. Or you accept it. That's it. The mark of the beast. You are done. You are toast. It's over. The time to change is now. God is making it easier for you. Accept the Lord. Follow the doctrine of Christ. Love one another. Because God talked about it, those who... See, remember when we read... What we read here, he said this. This is the words of Jesus himself. He said, behold, verse 12, he said, behold, I am coming quickly and my reward is with me to give everyone according to his work. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. The first and the last. And he says this, he says, blessed are those who do his commandments. That they may have all the right to the tree of life and they may enter through the gates into the holy city that is going to come from heaven. The holy city. So those who obey the commandment of God are those who dwell and those who abide in the doctrine of Christ. Because in the doctrine of Christ, Christ has said certain things. Love one another. Pray for your enemy. Do it. But today... Christians have turned their back on Jesus' own words. They would rather listen to a prophet than Jesus. I'm telling you. A oh, prophet said we should do this. They would be quickly do it. But Jesus said, love another. Huh? That's a problem. What is going on with us? What is wrong with us? It's about time to come back to the words of Jesus. We need to stay on the doctrine of Christ. Now let me close this. Because since it's time, it was done. Before we close. Let me take you to the book of Deuteronomy. Actually, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29. I want you to know this. It was done. Okay. Deuteronomy 29, 29. Deuteronomy 29, verse 29. Let's hear the word of God, okay? The secret things belong to the Lord, our the God. The secret things belong to the Lord, our God. Uh-huh. But our those, God. But those things which are revealed belong uh -huh. to us and to our children forever. Uh-huh. That we may do all the words of this law. That we may what? That, okay, Bible said this. Two things. Two things. Bible said this. There are certain secret things. That belongs to the Lord. Yeah. It doesn't belong to you. Right. It's up to him. You don't need to know. You don't, know to, you don't need to go visit mediums or psychic to know certain things that God has said is supposed to be a secret. Don't pry into God's secrets by going to mediums and spiritualism or anything else to try to know God's secrets. But the things he himself has revealed, he revealed them to his children. Like this revelation, say, he told Apostle John to not to seal it up. You see, he should give it to you and tell you all these things that is going to happen. These are the knowledge Jesus wants you to know. It's for you to know. He's revealing it. He said, know them and what? Do it and keep it and keep it. Look at the last words. That we may do all the words. We may do it. We may keep the doctrine of Christ, we may do what God says. So it's been revealed to you, so you will do what it says. If God tells you it's going to be a time where unjust is going to be unjust, so now, please repent before nobody knows the time. But the time is really at hand. Nobody knows. It can happen at any moment. It can happen where nobody's going to know, no pastor, no professor, nobody. So now we may live in it and still preach in it. You see, we may preach in it, but it could have happened. It could have happened, but nobody knows. So now is the time to repent. Change your ways. Change your ways. Stop filthy language. Stop wearing filthy cloth in the sense which I described. Praise the Lord. If you do this, Bible says, see, these are things that God revealed. They are secrets that belong to God. It's not up to you to know. For example, you see, some time ago, there is God revealed some things, deep, deep things to me. It's for my personal growth. It was fearful. But I will not allow 
to disclose that. The ones that I'm allowed to disclose that, I said it to you years ago about judgment that is coming to the world. I told you. Years ago, I stood in the pulpit. I said judgment years before it happened. I said judgment is coming to the world. Flocks are coming. What do we have? We have a virus. We have all these things. Millions of people died. Years ago, I stood in the pulpit and I declared to you, I declared to you about the, one of the biggest storms that wipe away cities after cities. More people are going to be involved. What did they happen? It all happened. So I'm not just saying things. I just want to say, you know my signature and you know what God has done. You know what God has used me to do. And in multitude time, big ones. They're not small, small things. This is a world stage. So this is a signature. It's a little glimpse of signature for you. So when I stand here and I declare things, you see, I know what I'm talking about. There are some things I cannot disclose to you because I have been told to seal it up. But it's for my own personal growth. So you can see that there are things that is about to come very soon. I know God will give me permit to say one of the most important things that the world need to hear. They will hear it just like I did before. At that time when I was prophesying, nobody thought things like that would happen. Years down the road, everybody, now it's over, everybody forgot. It's very, very common in prophecy time, in the Old Testament times. People always forget, and they come back to their sinful ways, like nothing ever happened. You want to hear my voice? Because God was speaking to someone today. Now, let me close this up. Let's go to Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. To turn. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 to 10. I believe this is the last verse. Galatians and we are six closing. Ah. 7. Verse 7. Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For whatever a man sows, Whatever you sow, you are going to reap, reap. it. Yes. Oh, you don't just think you sow something, you go back to bed and you sleep. Whatever you sow, the Bible says you are going to. I'm not saying this is the word of God. This is the holy word of God. He says, do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. God is not what? Monked. For whatever a man sows, that he will what? Also, reap. Reap. continue. Verse 8. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. Praise the Lord. Continue. Verse 9. And let us not grow weary while doing good. Uh -huh. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Praise the Lord. Verse 10. 10. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all. Especially to those who are of the household of faith. You hear that? Especially those who are Christians. Especially those who are your brothers, your brothers and sisters. Those who are your brothers' keepers. Especially treat them. They are the first to be loved. They are the first to be treated good. Don't see one another as your enemy. What? You have to see each other as your blood. Where is the blood? Christ's blood. Your blood, brother and sister. The blood that is linking all of us is the blood of Jesus that is more powerful than your natural blood that runs in your own family. The blood that links us together is so powerful than our own family blood that linked us to our family. So why don't we love one another more? Bible says we should not be wary of doing good. You see, if you are wary of doing good, you know what? You miss your opportunity. 
He says, if you have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially those who are of the household of faith. Praise the Lord. Bible says we should invest in the things of the spirit. Praise the Lord. Like going to church, listening to sermons, going to Bible studies, you know, doing activities that involve church things, you know, uh, spending time in prayer, spending time in encouraging somebody, send some encouraging words to somebody so that they will be encouraged. There's a lot of people that need your word of encouragement. You send it to them. If you receive a word of encouragement from somebody, don't just ignore it. Read it deeply because it didn't happen by chance. Maybe God wants to speak to you. You're just ignoring it. Like I said to you, many of you minister to me so much. The words I receive means a lot. I hold it, I save it, I read it, I read it, and reread it, and reread it. So children of God is the same thing. Whatever I do, I want you to do the same thing. I encourage you to encourage one another. Because that's the way God wants us to do. Because the Bible clearly says whenever you saw you are going to rip it. If you sow good things and somebody's repaying you bad stuff, don't worry. That is not the harvest. It's not the harvest. Don't worry. The harvest is surely come because God is the one that gives harvest. Yeah. It is not the one that hurts you. The one that hurts you, Satan has pushing forward ahead of you to discourage you and stop doing good. The Bible said, don't be worried. Keep doing good. Even if in the course of doing good, somebody keeps stepping on your toes discouraging you. Don't stop. Especially when it comes to the things of God, do not stop. Don't let anything come between you and the things of God, which is spiritual things. They are good. Don't get tired. Oh, please, don't get tired. Don't. Don't give up. Because God is the giver of the harvest. So if you pay somebody good and he return bad things to you, that is not the harvest. That is Satan's rushing ahead of you and say, this is your harvest. That is not the true harvest. The true harvest is what Jesus said. Behold, I'm coming quickly. My reward is with me. He's going to give the reward to you according to the work, according to what you did, the good things you did. And don't be worried. Don't get tired. Keep doing it for the sake of the Lord. Keep standing. Keep standing. I want to encourage you today because so many of us are discouraged because we are human sins. But God is speaking to us. The Spirit is speaking to you today. The Spirit of God is ministering to you because God loves you. There are some people, oh my God, they are so good. But people don't even see their goodness. People don't see their goodness. Instead, they look down on them. Now, let me speak to those whom people are looking down on you when you are doing so much good. Today, I'm with you. I'm standing with you. Please lift up your head. God, I've seen your goodness. Don't stop doing good. It does not matter. Whatever the enemy has projected somebody ahead of you, whether the person is saying bad stuff about you, is trying to destroy your name, is trying to say things that are not true, please, these are not... These are man-made stuff. Don't worry about man-made stuff. Worry about godly stuff. Godly reply, godly reward. These are the things you are looking for. Praise the Lord. Keep your eyes on the price. Don't keep your eyes on the things that can distract you. Because the enemy is good at distracting you. Because he knows you are going to receive a reward. So he's going to distract you. Please keep your eyes on the reward. Keep your eyes on the reward. Keep doing good. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Because you are a good person. If you are a good person, there are people who are going to discourage you from being who you are. You are naturally good. So whatever you do, you like to give. You like to help. You like to be there. You have to be around. You have to do the people just say, oh, this guy again. Oh, this person again. Oh, this person again. Oh, that. Do not be discouraged by the words of their mouth. These words are filthy language. God said such people, a time is coming. They are going to be filthy still. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Children of God, I encourage you in the name of the Lord. And I know 
the Lord our God shall keep you. Amen. May stand on our feet. God bless you. Let's stand on our feet. I want to lift up your hands before the presence of God. As we lift our hands, we just wanted to thank the Lord for this message. This is a message that is a very important message for all of us. The Bible said the time is at hand. In the days of Daniel, Daniel was not allowed to, 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 to unseal the secrets and the revelation of the Lord. And the time of Daniel was the beginning of Gentile dominion. The beginning of Gentile dominion. Which started from the king of Babylon. And each dominion is gone. Each powerful, powerful ones are gone. There's no power on earth. You see, no power on earth. They can say they have absolute power over everything. God is in control. The downfall of nations and the rise of nations, all of them depend on the Lord. God has his own timetable for everything. The peoples of this world, because they are Christian that live in this world, God is looking on them. When Abraham prayed to the Lord, when God wanted to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, it got to a point God said, if there are ten righteous men, I will spare the whole city. I will spare everybody. Wow. God said he's going to spare the whole city, the whole city, the whole town, the whole place. If he can find ten righteous men, just ten of them, for their sake, God is ready to redraw his hands. For their sake, God is ready not to bring judgment. Because of the believers that are on earth. That's why judgment has not begun yet. But when the believers are gone through raptures, that's when the judgment is going to come. It makes sense because that's the way God works. If God is going to bless you because of your goodness, all your generation will be blessed just because of you alone. The bad person in your generation is being blessed because of your goodness. God is fair in everything he does. So it's sin. When one man sin, the Bible says, that entered and affected everybody. Every man that has a soul was infested with sin. So Jesus came on the scene. The Bible says he came from heaven and those who are born of God, then because he came to take away sin, those who are in him and of his nature, all sins are wiped away. Children of God, the blessing is in Christ. I pray for you this afternoon. As you stand, you're going to pray together, wherever you are. You pray that if there's a habit in your life, you know that there's certain things, certain character, you like to curse, you like to say bad stuff to somebody. It's not just the church. Maybe you're doing it at your job. You're not doing it at the church, but you're doing it at the job. Maybe you're doing it in your family. You're not doing it at the church. You see, whoever you are, your words define who you are. If you like to curse in your church or outside your church, and then you don't curse in the church, you are still someone who curses. Just because you're not doing it in the church does not erase the fact that you have a filthy mouth. The Lord says, we believers, we must season our speech with salt. We must season the things we talk. When we talk to one another, even if the person is angry with us, we should know how to talk to them. We come down and talk nicely when you're being talked harshly. Learn that habit because you are unique. You are wonderfully created by God. You are born again believer. You are born of the spirit. And Bible said those who are born of the spirit, that spirit nature cannot sin. That spirit nature cannot sin. The only thing that can sin is the flesh. The flesh nature which all of us have. But let the spirit nature rule. Let us walk in the spirit. We will not sin if we walk in the spirit. Because that nature cannot sin if we walk in it. Let it have dominion over our life. 
So this afternoon, I am going to lead you in this short prayer. It's a very short prayer. If you have certain habit in your life, maybe you are somebody who likes to insult your husband or insult your wife. Maybe you are somebody who likes to insult, just insult anybody, your colleague or your brother or your sister in your church. It's a time to ask God to forgive you. And trust me, if you truly mean it and you repent, God is going to wipe everything off the plate. So I'm going to stand with you as you pray. Begin to open your mouth and pray. In the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I stand for your people. I pray for them. Even as they pray, I ask for forgiveness of our sins, all of us. At one point, we have used a filthy language and filthy talk. All of us, at one point, we have worn a filthy cloth. Father, remove that cloth from us. Help us to live in holiness. Help us to walk in holiness. Help us in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every filthy talk, every filthy character, any behavior in our life, a spirit of disobedience, spirit of disrespect. Take it out of our life. Help us to be humble and submissive. In the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, help us to walk in love and love one another as you have commanded us. Teach us your ways, oh God, and forgive us our trespasses. Remove the filthy cloth, because as you remove the cloth of filth, from Joshua. We ask that you take the same from us. In the name of Jesus. We pray, oh God. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Um, I believe that we have a communion service today. So let's keep standing. And uh, let's the deacons. And uh, 